to the best worst podcast on the planet the raw live show i'm frankie j and along with me is the one and only mama joe mom of the show and to and before we do anything else why don't we go ahead and jump into on this day with to happy opening, happy opening day of baseball but on this day on this day in 1980 oh wow a lot of a lot of women we're on the couch. We're in their living room watching this. One of the greatest cliffhangers of all time in American television. Oh, Dallas. 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 Ended with the shooting of JR and the famous Who Shot JR. Whoa. Yeah. That's crazy. Wow. To think that was 1980. 1982, U.S. scientists returned from Antarctica with the first mammal fossil found. 1982, not even that long ago. Well, hey, 1995, the AUM subway attack. Do you remember that group? The Japanese Buddhists? No. The group uh, Supreme Truth, I believe they were called. That's a movie. Founded in 1987, released nerve gas in Tokyo subway. Wow. That's all I got on the stage, but subways are a uh, hot topic these days as well. Interesting, interesting. Uh, good stuff to start to show. Remember. But um, welcome back, oh, as always, everybody. And we thank the thousands of people that have been tuning in and the support and all the feedback and messages that we've been receiving. It's awesome. We want to send a quick shout out to our last guest last week, Eric Hawk, the general manager of the Western New York Roller Hockey League here in Buffalo, New York. Um, if anybody wants to check out that past show, go to our website, rawlive.com, click on his link to sign up and get a 20% discount by putting the code rawlive in the checkout area anyways we just wanted to say thank you to eric because he's a good friend of the show and i want to start off by asking a question does anybody have plan on having or have had one of those huge bean bags that are all over the internet right now the ones that you bust out of a box and a whole family can, can sleep on and i'm just wondering if anybody has a huge bean bag but anyways moving on Joanne, we were going to kind of catch up with you this week, and I don't know if you thought you got off the hook or not, but <laughs> we we're going to do a little interview and drill you a little bit on why you wrote a book but before we do that. So everybody knows um, whatever platform you are watching live right now, feel free to drop a comment. We can see all the comments and we'll get to the comments a little bit later in the show, along with opening up the phone lines so you can call in live or text in live. So we got that going on. So Joanne, back yes. to you. <laughs> <laughs> back to you this back is the fun part. uh oh <laughs> well you wrote a book and we wanted to talk about it okay let's talk about it a little bit let's talk about and it. why you wrote a book and i don't want to conduct a full you know no. hour and a half exclusive uh -uh. Doctor style interview where we sit in an awkward room with one big bright ass light i i'm just going to ask you kind of right from the get-go you wrote a book you wrote it obviously later in life we're not going to go back to your you know single digit year old <laughs> Why did you write a book? Where did it start? And how did it come to the point of being published and sold? And what is it about? What's it about? Yes. Okay. Well, the title of it is The Unabashed Truths. The Entertainment Industry Won't Tell You. A guide. Does this come in right? Oh, it does. A guide to the business of acting. And in all honesty, the way this book came about was because my kids were feature film actors and what happened was their school, one of their schools, because they went to an acting school, wanted me to conduct a class to teach the parents about the business. Because you see, it's kind of crazy when you are the parent of a child actor and there are many things that you have to know to do and behaviors and all that kind of stuff. So what happened was that somebody then, a friend said to me, why don't you take the course and write it as a book? And then what I do is I then help people with the entertainment industry who either parents of child actors or people who want to be in the entertainment industry, actors that were acting and want to come back. I even cover background work because if you live in a good enough city, it's a great retirement type of job to have. Um, and just all the nuances, the ins, the outs of being an actor. But the business part, not the craft part, because there are two oh. different things. Okay, you so you're more or less kind of giving a background on what you experienced personally with the process 
of yep. going through and other all- people and yeah. and you know and other people that I knew. Okay, so you took notes and kept receipts from everybody that was involved, parent wise, child wise, whatever wise, as far as auditions from that dirty mm-hmm. background and all the way through production and final mm-hmm. promotion of the movie, and you just kind of write write it out for people what to expect is that a good way to put it well what to expect i also in it have a questionnaire as to you know again you may want to be an actor and you may have the craft down or you may not i mean you also have to take classes and but you have to learn the business part of it because you are the commodity you are the brand and you have to learn how to deal with, oh, what do I do on an audition? Um, how do I respond to a talent manager? What do I do after the audition? It's that kind of stuff. How do I market myself? It was very different years ago. Now today it's, again, because of social media, because of video auditioning, because now you don't necessarily go to in-person auditions because COVID changed the whole arena. However, this book was written before COVID, so it still applies. It gives you the necessary tools you need. It shows you how to write your resume, even if you never acted. So it, it's a very different business. Yeah, and I, it's, it's gotten much different now because most times it's all done for people, including kids with all these agents and people that want their hands in the in the pocket. So well, a lot of time, changing it, it is, but what I mean is everybody wants their hand in it somehow. Oh, I'm an assistant. I carry their bags. I pack their luggage. I, somehow they're involved. There's always somebody that wants to hang out with the people. Well, I guess so. But, you know, you know again, you're on different, you're there's, there's also what this does is this explains the cast of characters because you're on a set that's production. Production is different than let's say what a casting director does than what your talent manager does in a talent agent. Do you need both? And right now, because the industry is changing so much, it may go back to like the olden days because yes, you have a talent manager and an agent. They have two sort of different roles, but somehow over the years, they started blending and they're really the ones that go and get you the jobs to interview, remember, or interview to go on an audition. They get you the auditions. Your job is to book that audition. So, okay. and they, and they make money off of you. It's not a commission. It's a fee. So you're really paying them. And, and, you know, people say, oh, my manager doesn't do anything for me. Well, it's also, are you marketable? See, and that's where I am very honest in the book. And in the book, I have a questionnaire. Because, like, if you can't go on an audition at a moment's notice or do a tape on a moment's notice, tape, notice we call it tape, (laughs) um, you know, you're not going to get the job. It's all a matter of doing it at the last minute being ready. And now actors are complaining because they also have to know how to do self tapes, which I knew how to do because that's how I, I was using a video camera with my kids. Oh, so, the big ones. Yeah, the- yeah. Well, not the big ones. We're not that, we're not that old, the smaller ones, the eight millimeter ones. And then you had to, you know, put it over to the computer. And I learned Adobe Premiere, like, oh my God, in the, um, two, you know, like 2005, 2008. So, it, you know, VHS and those big ones. Right. No, no, no. We weren't, we're not, we didn't, my kids weren't that old. So, All yes. Right. All right. We're not trying to drill your age here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's, <laughs> let's not take it somewhere we don't have to fucking go, Joanne. Okay. It's not all about you. <laughs> Oh, well, that's see. I just I eat my words right there because it is about you. Because <laughs> it is about me, you know. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So I've I've actually had conversations with Joanne about this that I feel like things are sort of coming around, like vintage wise, even with sports and the way people are dressing. It seems like everything's kind of coming back around. They had a tribute. I know you're not a sports person, but back in the '80s, there was professional hockey players in the NHL that wore hockey pants versus hockey shorts or whatever they're called now, but they were a line made by Cooper and they are bringing them back now in pregame warmups and stuff. So everything's kind of coming back around in the vintage way and what better way of advertising except word to mouth to start. Right. Yeah. Bring back the Joe for helmet. I mean, yeah, I mean, (laughs) I mean, it's stuff that's proven to work advertised by who you are and what you bring. You don't have to blast people with marketing tools and, 
suck them into a fart cloud of pyramid scammage. I mean, come yeah. on. No, it's it's all about being a brand. It's yeah. you know, and it is word of mouth. You know, there's an old saying that says it's not what you know, it's not who you know, it's who knows yeah. you. And I so how do you get you know, how do you get someone to know you? Um what? and we're living in this world that everybody is doing all of this, you know, I mean I have to say podcasting or there's posting up on Instagram and, you know, are you an influencer? And in actuality, in the entertainment industry, they do look to see your, um, they see your posts, they see how many followers you have, and they will actually look at somebody and maybe that person isn't as good of an actor, but if they have a huge following, they're going to pick them. Let's talk about that. Sad. I have a problem with that. Yeah. Okay. Because there are so many mother effers out there that pay that's right followers true that's okay. right that's it's right to fucking fake it to make it there's another thing to do what pay to play that's and what it's called what we've built here over the course of six years and what it's becoming now people that you know know us from the past and what we've done in the past might say wow they've really gotten i was gonna say that better. some of the most talented people i know aren't even on the internet true well that's right because they don't really they don't really need right. it yeah. Um, I mean, it's it's also kind of, and the whole industry is changing because now what's happening is look at your commercials. I mean, Arnold Schwarzenegger is making a commercial. What does that do to the regular actor? It's pushing them out. Just like all of your audio books, either you can do your own audio book or they're going to have somebody famous do it. So what's happening is the whole, it, everything's changing. Um, and also what's gone on with COVID and in the entertainment industry is yeah. they're pushing out the middle, middle of the road manager, the one that's not with the top, but still can earn a living. But it, that, that's another thing that's, you know, the tippity top going to be gone. Yep. The tippity top. So that led you. So I'm just because I know you and Todd knows, you now. um, do you feel better? Letting that about out. what? The unabashed truth. You feel better getting it out on paper for people. Well, that... I, it was it was I'm... a nice. It was Wait. good. It was fun. It is very honest. I taught at classes on the book in the class at like our library because you know that's what yeah. I would do because that's just who I am. And one woman just was so angry because she goes. I just wasted ten thousand dollars on my daughter, and you're telling me that I shouldn't have done it. And I'm like, eh, well, yeah, you could have spent fourteen ninety nine and gotten the paper, <laughs> yeah, copy. right? And there you go. Because <laughs> it's but, only nineteen pages long, right? And uh, but again, in it, it does have that questionnaire that's saying, "Do you do this? Do you can you do that?" You know, Jeez. especially for parents. You know. It's amazing. Can you get them on, on an audition? Do they behave? Do they listen to you? Um, yeah. It just, it's a very, you know, you answer it. And then I basically say, if you get this amount wrong or however I mark it up, I'm like, don't bother. And again, that's not the craft side, you know, or like I, the only way I can say this is um, I had an eye doctor appointment yesterday. Okay. So I'll, I'll change the, right and I will say, if you know my last name, I'm a very famous concert pianist cousin who has won three Grammys. And that, yep, do, 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 go Google my last name. And this guy goes to me, are you related? And I said, yes. And he goes, well, I went to Manus School of Music, which is one of the top, which okay. is what my cousin went to. And he was so cute. This eye doctor goes, well, my degree from Manus says, this is not the job that you should be doing. So. <laughs> You know, I mean, he, don't put yourself in a bubble. Go to well, grade school. That's right. Don't put yourself <laughs> in a, go to grade school. What did you grade, say? Grade school. Go to trade school. Get a certificate. From well, you want to know something? Let's take that topic. I agree. I, I let's talk about that because again, you know, then that'll I can I can segue into my purpose stuff, which is what yes. I used to do. Also, see, we got um, you on. You know, but. Again, trade schools. What do you know? How much a steel worker makes, an iron maker ma makes? These guys make a, a, a ton of money, and yeah. and nobody's taking these jobs. Auto mechanic. Do you blame them? That's right. Uh, plumber. 
plumber, electrician. When that, you know, I don't care. AI is not going to replace an electrician true. or a plumber. This is true. No. Maybe that's why they didn't t teach that in schools. Don't get me. Maybe going that's on. why it's not called teaching. It's called schooling. Maybe hmm. that's. Hmm. Well, we're gonna think about we, Well, Wait. we talk about it, but you know, here, okay. I was not a good student in high school. So what did they do to the boomers? Especially a female boomer. I learned shorthand and typing when I was in high school. And then in the class, we're like the C students because that's what they did. But yeah, then right. also what they, I mean, do you guys have BOCES upstate? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. I mm -hmm. mean, that could be terrific for some because it, I, yep. like you could become a pilot through BOCES. People yep. don't know this. Yeah, well, look what both these did for me. What did it do for you? Well, look, <laughs> what did you do for both with both? What did I do for uh -huh. both? I gave both a better HR department. Well, <laughs> sometimes, well, especially back in our day, a lot of those, a lot of the kids who went there were either, you know, couldn't sit still, or back then there was no ADHD or whatever, but True. became, I mean, oh, I mean, your generation it, didn't have it. Well, no, we well, didn't. We I didn't have safe spaces. We got, no. We got told we were, oh, God. I can't remember anything other than the word hyper. I'm going to reel us back being in. Being used here, back in. When oh, I was, yeah. You should reel us back in. We got to reel us back in here because really? we want to know about. So you wrote the book yeah. and um, it's available on Amazon, correct? Yes, Same it way. is. Okay. I got my own copy, but I got it as a gift. And what does it cost? Show me. Again. It's autographed. See? The <laughs> unabashed truth. The correct? Unabashed truth. Yep. Unabashed I mean, truth. The entertainment industry won't tell you. Well, we're we'll all live. Want to know? Are there any Nickelodeon stories in that book? Um, there's another day. Oh boy, oh, you have boy. to read and find out, folks. You have to read and find out. Woo wee! Because woo. Yep. Yeah. We. Yep. Well, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Are any of the questions that they ask? Are you okay with dropping your kid off for a couple hours and not knowing what they're doing? Uh, no, you, you can't. Can. Okay, here's the deal. All right. All right. Can you watch? Number one. Wait a minute. Number one, if a parent does that, A, wrong. But B, if it's a SAG set, you're, you have to watch your child. It oh. is the law that okay. you have to be there and you have to be able to see and hear them. You're not even allowed to go into costume with if it's a child without. Nope their parent then how are these bad things happening they just can't go in the bathrooms with them. because you have parents wait a minute i can give you a real true story okay. um oh god i'm trying to remember what the the models oh <laughs> it'll come to me but what happened is women this woman in new york city had a modeling school and basically she parents from the midwest who have 15 year old daughters who want their children to be famous mm -hmm. would send them to her unattended by an adult. Got it. So this, I mean, you should have seen what used to even have on sets. Like one time when my kids work with somebody, it was clear that this five year old was tired and the director. Now, of course this was not a SAG set, so it's not as tight. Um, the director said, you know, it, we can stop and your child can take a break and take a little nap and we can come back to work. And, and the happened. guy, the parent, you know what the parent said? Oh, no, my kid can work for 15 hours straight. Ooh. Okay. That's so good. again, guys, it's back with, let's go back to hockey. Let, let, let's put this all together. When you see how parents respond to the coach, it's okay. the same thing. It, 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 it's also a lot of these parents see that kid as a way out and they count on it. Yep. That's right. Oh, anything. You, yeah. And even these it. acting, I'm sorry, I'm talking over you, but you are right. so right. They, they're acting schools. Again, it's the same thing. Pay to play. Just like yep. even with soccer, you know, you, you, yeah. Yeah. And that's what they do for acting. Pay to play. Yeah, the more money you got, the further you get, and then the more money you make, the more money you spend, and then you end up on the fucking streets anyways. It's just exactly. A, there you go. It's <laughs> true. Think about it. I mean, I you know, there's a lot of my favorite TV programs and series where you see half these actors are in fucking prison rehab. I mean, the the guy who played in the Bronx Tale, uh, who played what was his name in 
C, they called him. Mm. He's in prison. Hmm. You know, I mean, that kid had it made. He could have been a mobster for life in the movies. You well, no, wait. It, okay, that was in the movie. I actually know somebody who was on the broad in the Broadway show. I mean, he's a performer, and oh. you know, but that is was he in prison? His name was Kalajamal. No. Kalajamal. No. Let's talk about no. it. No, no. But yeah, this is again Colucchio. You know, Colucchio. What was his damn name? Colucchio. Colucchio. Robert De Niro was his father and drove a school yeah. bus. And then uh, the working man, the that's work who gets respect. No, nah, not really. The working man. Yeah, well, that's what we're doing. We're working. We're we're all live in it over here. But um, so Joanne, they can go to Amazon and get your book. I'm gonna yes, put the link you. on the website rawlive.com. Check after the show, I will put the link up, and um, you can purchase the book. And I don't know if Joanne will autograph it though. We're you have to be <laughs> super duper special like me to get an autograph that's copy. Right. I earned that sucker. So. Um, if you want to learn about the industry, if you think it's for you or if you think it's for your kids. Well, easy peasy. Most times it's not the kid's choice anymore, but I know it's not. It. Oh, it's God. <laughs> I don't want to get into that shit. It, it starts with me with sports, but the parents are wanting their kids to be, you know, top That's running right. fucking prospects at age four. And the kid doesn't even want to put a helmet on. And he cries when you take him to the fucking practice. There's a problem. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, it, uh, that's what happened to me when you know I used to teach figure skating, and one time I was subbing for somebody, and this guy, lots of money, was going to build a rink. He's building an indoor rink in his basement for his kid. He looks at me and he goes, "Is she teaching him properly?" He was four years old. Whoa. Really? Well, and then I looked at him and I said, "Yes, yeah, she's doing a good job." But I said to him, "What if he doesn't like this sport?" Yeah. And he goes, well, "I don't much. care." Yeah. You know, it's like. No, that's what they want. This is what happens. I mean, it's also a matter of how you present things to your children in that respect, because what ends up happening, I was listening to a hockey coach at Hofstra, and um, he was saying that a lot of these kids that were doing all the hockey and the hockey travel and all of that stuff, and parents wanted them to get the scholarships to play hockey. Half the kids did not want to play hockey in college. They get burned out, man. Burn out. That's why I got to play multiple sports. Yep. Yeah. Well, they don't keep score anymore. anymore so. well, oh, please. <laughs> the little kids. It doesn't matter. That, that, it doesn't that, matter. I think you still should be. Oh. No, I got. Let me talk about that because what that does, kids have to learn how to win and lose and what it feels Thank like you. on both fucking sides. Okay. When you lose, it sucks and you want to do better. Now, if you're always winning, you have nothing to lose. And that's the Thank mentality you. these kids are going to have. That, and that's oh, well, a it's not. Scary thing. Sorry. No, no, you're a hundred percent, but it's also bad for your brain. It's a brain function so yes, that it. when you, when you feel, when you've lost, right. And you have to, uh, you only learn from failure. You do yeah. not learn from always getting a trophy. You don't learn from always being the best. Look at some of these people that are, oh, they're the great, you know, football player in high school. They go into the real world and they fail. And that's because they haven't been taught how hmm. to fail. You got to be able to hear you're a loser once in a while in life. Right. There's nothing something wrong with it. You're a loser, buddy. You lost. Yes. Ha, ha, ha. We whooped your ass all season. Something to strive for. Yeah. Thank well, you. Rivalries are amazing. I mean, without rivalries, there wouldn't be sports. And without losing, there wouldn't be sports. It doesn't make sense for me for everyone to be a winner. Why play? Like, I'm not going to well, buy the Scrabble game if everybody wins. What the fuck? Does, that doesn't even sound Well, right. what's the point? And and it also remember, it's a, these are adrenaline things that yeah. go on. And I think that your whole brain function, because you're always winning, because you think you're entitled, because nobody has said no to you. It, mm -hmm. it just is. It's so bad. I mean, we're seeing it. I mean, the suicide rate is incredible. Yeah. yeah when kids start hearing the word no, they claim it's trauma. When you ask right. him to lawn and he's 16 years old and he cries and runs to mommy, there's a problem. Yes, there is. I was traumatized because I've was never owned a lawn. That's right. I yeah, was laying at 11. True story, by the way. Um, We're not going to talk about that. Down. Anyways. <laughs> so we'll we'll put that up there for you, Joanne, the book. And Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And we're going to sell some of those. What what do we get like kickback wise? Are we gonna get a little bit here for the show? Of course. Like, are we gonna get the charity dropping? Yes, absolutely. Because that's what <laughs> pigeons do in New York City. 
There is a, a true story about that, by the way, on how the pigeons took over New York City. I'm going to research it for the next show. Oh, good. Because they did take over New York City. And in actuality, when they came to Atlantic Beach, when I lived, I used to live on the South Shore of Long Island, I was like, and they were mingling, co-mingling with the seagulls. I was like, uh, oh. could you go back to the city? Co-mingling. The pigeons aren't dirty. They're feces. That's actually uh. true. Well, anyways, um, I researched it a little bit. But um, why don't we go ahead and... Not many people that are eating pigeons. <laughs> I mean, you can. Some people eat pigeons. They do. they do. There was an episode no, of that. No, you can. You, you can know, eat any bird. Well, True. you know, Andrew, Andrew Zimmerman, that food guy, does bizarre foods. He went into New York City or New Jersey. I prefer a quail. Him and his chef actually caught a pigeon off using a rock off a bridge, and they... They feathered it and they ate it and they said it was wonderful. So, ugh, not me. But anyways, um, take a quick second here. We got a couple comments. We got Sean Galvin says, I think, I, I, I think it's a, 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 official and cool. Thanks. We already knew that. I'm just kidding. Aye. Um, and then J Joey Haynes says, are we live pale? Yeah, oh, we're yes, always we live Joe. And then Tommy D a Bronx tail. Colo, Colo, Collage, collage, It's C. That's why they shortened it because it sucks to pronounce. Jesus Christ! If I have to practice my name, I thought it, it was collagemal. <laughs> no, collage. I don't know. Who cares? It's C. It was a great movie. It was. All those movies are good. Yeah, they all got meaning. I don't respect that guy no more. They all got meaning. But I don't either. But we're we're gonna open up. We'll open up. <laughs> I <the> agree. <laughs> <laughs> You're a little too loony oh. for me. <laughs> loony toony. Looney Tooney. Why don't we open up the phone lines? And before we do so, um, everybody do realize we can only take one call at a time. If you want to just send a text message to the phone number, you can do that and we'll uh, implement that into the conversation. If we are on a phone call, um, we'll try to keep them brief and short, you know, one minute share. And if we by chance missed your phone call, we'll call the number right back. So we'll yeah, just, send a text, leave us your name. We'll call you right back. Yeah. Uh, Pop the number up on there. Yeah, we're we're tinkering with the the calling thing still. If anybody wants to say it's easy, come show me it, that it's not, or that it's easy. Come show me that how easy it is. The best worst. <laughs> the, the best worst. Do you know podcast. what today is? Can I tell you what National Day is? Bring Does anybody know? Let's talk about it. It's National Proposal Day. National proposal. Really? Yeah. Do oh. listen to some of these. National Proposal Day. National Ravioli Day. Oh my God! What's that suckers thing? National Alien Abduction Day, <laughs> and the National Day of Happiness, which only oh. occurs after an alien abduction, of course, because you get the probe treatment. You do, you son of a gun! That's you leave with a smile. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> what other kind of weird news you got? You know what I read? Well, oh. And it kind of goes back a few shows when we were talking about like when cocaine was good in the eighties. Not that I know, because I was a young young kid. The FBI has been but watching. I don't listen. I'm not <sighs> sharks. Did you hear that? There's a a myth or a study done that a lot of these bags that you know they try to smuggle the coke in and they use airplanes and they drop it in the water and sometimes they don't get to it or whatever. There's actually cases where they believe that the sharks have eaten said bundles of cocaine and the sharks, the sharks are in the waters all coked up and that's why they're becoming more aggressive next movie cocaine shark yeah cocaine oh that's bear. a good one i like that oh, yeah. just like cocaine yeah. bear i'm telling you it's a true google sharks and cocaine i saw it somewhere on the internet and it does make sense because think of all the cocaine that's probably sitting at the bottom right now of the ocean that didn't make it over or sharks are bottom found. feeders they're not but that Things don't stay buried forever, Tio. They float. They do. They all yeah. float. Ask down fucking wow. Dexter. His body's got found. We all float down he here. Was the best, <laughs> he's the best serial killer in history, and he's not even real. Well, that's I mean, why he's the best. I'm close to a serial killer. I can feel it in my brain. But anyways, that's another day. Oh, my hand is healed up, actually. Thanks for asking. Really? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> from, from the... Vi vi oh, God. Why don't you talk about Thumbs it? Thumbs up. I want to get more. Yeah, I got attacked by a nasty dog. Very nasty dog. <laughs> One-eyed Willie over here. One-eyed Willie. Very small dog. Very small. Um, yeah, I had a pretty nasty, nasty bite there, but Jeff took care of me, bandaged me up, and it's all healed up. About what, two weeks? Yeah. I got a teeny little, teeny little mark. 
doesn't look like it's going to uh, be suable. So he yeah. lucked out. Well, you did admit it was your fault. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I didn't I have to coerce you into dog dog all over me. Well, that's what happens when you try to pick up a dog on his blind side. It is cowering down. <laughs> um, are you going to share? Over oh, there? she's token. Token and smoking when you're off camera. There it is. Wait. Love it. Got her. <laughs> Love it. Got her pen. <laughs> Got her pen. Her penis. Her penis. National proposal day. What? what That's how many, ridiculous. How many freaking holidays or, or days are they going to? When are they going to come up with Frankie J Day? Oh. What the fuck? I, I'm about the one uh, day. Just give me a birthday. Let's talk about the uh, Tyson chicken. Oh, thing. bring it up. Talk Where about they, it. We got rid of a lot of their workers and then hired, what was it, 40, 52,000 migrants for cheaper? And then that, the, I think the the president said something like those people want it more. And they're easier to. Uh, well, I'm going to be right. nasty about this. Go ahead. Well, let's, let's hear it. Let's give you the floor, Mama they Joe. Jobs Mama too, remember. Oh. Unfortunately, okay. Your migrants who are legal, okay, will take jobs that Americans are not. And again, back to the whole entitlement word, back to, well, I don't want to do that. So what do we do as a country if we've got people that won't take jobs that, okay, do I totally support the fact that you're paying them really no money? So we're in a conundrum. Well, right. well, didn't they fire the people that were in those that already had those jobs? I know they say that they, uh, a lot of those people didn't want the jobs, but didn't they already have the jobs? I'm not sure that they. Let's look it up. I'm they not sure that they people. did. They fire them. Yes, because it's, if they fired them, then they have to pay unemployment to these people. Oh, so, right. what kind of money are they? All right, I'm looking this up. Yeah, because that's the understanding I got that a lot of people lost their jobs. And then the, the president said these people are doing this because, or I mean, that they're easier to to train and they're doing jobs that other people don't want to do. That was the narrative, I think. Lazy people are so lazy. Well, I don't know. If no, it's, you know what? Uh, it's a money saver, man. The, the economy is so screwed right now it that is. it makes more sense. But here's, here's, there's always a kickback. You get what you pay for, right? A lot of these immigrants aren't trained in the way of our food handling procedures. And when you see reels on Instagram of people sitting on the ground in India with rats running all over the food that you're cooking and you're using your slight toenail to slice the goddamn meat to cook. I, I mean, what standards are they bringing or are they going to actually follow even if they are trained? You got to worry about that. Too. Maybe they're Almost. just creating the problem so then they can bring the military in Ooh, to control the that. problem. You brought something up earlier about that. Yeah, I yeah. think that's what's going on on the subways. I think it's to desensitize people of the military being around them at all times. True. If you don't comply to what we tell you, this gun's going to be in your face. Damn right. And uh, well, we're, doing it good. we're doing it for the benefit of everyone. Doesn't this sound like sort of North Korean? No, it sounds sort of like the pandemic where we're doing it for the benefit of everyone. Mm -hmm. Agree. Everyone just agree. See, it, you know what? There nope. a lot of this. There's a lot out here, and a lot of it is saying it's not. Tyson Foods needs to fill 5,200 oh, yeah. factory jobs. Oh, and I, I'm okay. okay. Does it, does so then I, I guess I'm open to. Uh, and that's what? on Bloomberg Tele. Okay. So, and then there is somebody that did write out there saying that they fired all they fired people, which I don't think that they did. But again, I think it's they amazing. fired more than they fired though. Like what? Uh, I don't know if they fired yet. I'm not seeing it. I'm, I don't want to take that you back. for the next week, right? <laughs> um, but, you know, again, there is some validity as to the fact that there are jobs out there that Americans will not take. Yeah. And 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 so what are you going to do? You got to film I, somehow, I right? when they say that because uh, those uppies say that. Well, when Who's going to pick our fruit? Who's going to, like, that's just so... A machine yeah. soon, soon off fruit is going to be picked by a robot. It's going to be a laser printing fruit. Well, we they're, already have those huge crop machines well, that go through. The laser, you remember the laser printing meat already? Yeah, which is well, weird. Well, like, yeah, 3D printing. 3D printing. Meat. Right. So, why, what's to say they're not going to 3D print you? They yeah. could. <laughs> That's true. That would be awesome. There you go. 
Yeah, I would send that to all my exes and be like, here, if you ever wanted a fucking punching bag, here it is. Here it is. <laughs> but it is. no, it's a, it's a sad situation, but I kind of feel sad. that. Did you go burp? Did I hear burp? No. Nope. Me. Sure. Not me. Oh, me. Maybe we're getting a call. But it, it, it's a, you know, I, it's a conundrum. That's really what it is because. Okay, we're in drum. You do. Uh, you know, it's a conundrum. And I don't know about where you're saying that the military, I mean, let's go back to the subways. Do we want to talk? About, do, let's talk about what well, happened about it. on New York City subways Jeez. and what the governor brought in and the National Guard to a train state to guard to, to Grand Central Station. Okay. And to check, I guess, what for bombs mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And then three days later, there's a shooting on the subway. Don't well, say about the airplane. Right. I mean, but the thing is, no, don't. But the thing is, is that it's not Grand Central that needs this. There are other train lines that do need this. Yeah. So why are you putting it at the hub of the east side where it's the wealthiest of the wealthiest coming into Grand Central? Got to so, get that condition first. It's getting deep. You know, I mean, it just, it, it, we're not making any sense and it's scary. That's all I have to say. And I am glad I have them put first, in the on the businesses. If we can get them to comply, they shut down. All the hard workers on beneath them are forced to as well. Well, the G, the former GM of the o Oakland Athletics from the movie Moneyball said it adapt or die. Right. So, right. Anyways, um, we actually got a call. Let's take a call here. Oh, what do you guys think? Bronx tip. We got a call coming in. Let me see if I can connect this. I'm gonna look up Collagimo. Let's see. <laughs> and, hey, you're live on the you're you're on the air with the Raw Live Show. Can you hear me? Hey, you got can you hear me? Hear, yeah, hear yeah. Me okay, I'll be calling on that Obama phone. Just be side chain. Yo, I've been listening to your show. I want to call in and say uh, I, I'm proud of you guys. You guys been doing good. We've been listening to you. Hear me and my fam. We appreciate what you do and you uh. I just felt like I had to call in, you know. I'm from Buffalo too, so we representing down here, and we uh, yeah. we just wanted to uh, you know, I'm here with my dreads. I don't know. I see Frankie J with all them tattoos and shit. I ain't got no tattoo, but I got dreads. No. I'll be uh, you know, I just want to tell you guys. I call in that Joanne. Joanne, you be fine over there, sweetie. <laughs> I'm uh, I've been thinking about you sometime before I lay down and ladder myself up. Oh, whoa, whoa. damn, Joanne. Well, you guys, you guys continue hey, hey. doing what you're doing and uh, side chain out. I'll catch you guys. What? Side chain, you there? He hung up. He hung up. What was that? <laughs> what was that? Wow. <laughs> wow, Mama Joe. I don't know if I should be upset. I don't know how to feel about this. Let's talk, I don't about, the, I don't let's know talk to, about it. It's your show. <laughs> now, what was his name? What was his name? It's Sidechain. What? He called himself Sidechain. Sidechain. Please, side please chain. call it again. He, please call again. Yes. Sometime. Oh, it's back. <laughs> that was amazing. Wow. Okay. Good voice. I, how do you? How, how do I feel about this? I don't know. I Good think voice. He was hitting on her. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Sidechain. <laughs> um. You're Wait, I tell my husband. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Claude's probably like, get her out of here. Yeah, he is. He's, out he's, of he's like, would you go to California? Could There's you your go side by chain. yourself? Get out of here. Hang out with side chain. <laughs> he's got, I hope he calls back. Oh, wow. wow. That was amazing. Cool. Well, Joanne, it had to be your book. He's buying your book. <laughs> side chain, buy your book. It'll be on our website, rawlife.com. You might have to send him a free copy. Maybe. <laughs> we don't got much information except his name is Sidechain. He's got dreadlocks and he's from Buffalo. That's all we know. Right? He didn't really say too much. Uh, uh, he said we were awesome, though. So that's pretty sweet. Well, he's, that he's is nice. That was very nice. Jeez. Yeah. Wow. That was unexpected. Joe, Ann, <laughs> your cheeks are as pink as those headphones again. I know. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. We don't talk about that. <laughs> that was our best call ever. Oh, wow. Oh. Wow. I'm coming down off a of high right now. Holy yeah, man. right. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I don't say either. I, I don't either. I it was I a great call. Up. I hope Glad it calls me. Yeah. I hope does it back to side chain. Did your phone minutes run out? Jesus. You're on for two seconds. <laughs> he said he called from an Obama <laughs> he said he phone. Called. An yeah. Obama phone. What does that mean? 
I don't know. Free phone or something. Oh, a free phone. Probably there you go. That's that's right. That's right. So, we ran out of minutes. Sidechain, we will start a GoFundMe to get you more <laughs> minutes on your phone, man, if you call every week with some shit like that. Because that was awesome. Best phone call ever. Thank Not you. to knock any of our other phone calls. You know, Sue was great last week. Our loser. Loser. The loser. Not loser. The loser, loser from the Olympics. Yeah, from the 84 Olympics. 84 Olympics. Maybe, Sue, if you're out there listening, why don't you call in? We'd love to hear from I you. I don't again. know if she is. She, she, you know, like I said, her, her, uh, I got a personal it. line. If you could uh, be in any event in the Olympics, what would it be? Me? Yeah. I wouldn't want to be in the Olympics. Oh, boy. Joanne, a oh, figure skater? You know, a figure skater. Do you think? What would you go as? Hmm. Now, think handicap. 40 Olympics. yard dash. You're a handicap Olympian. 40 yard dash. In your wheelchair? Or on your oh. knees, potato sack. I don't think they do. They have it in a wheelchair. Uh, come on, man. What? Yes, of course. Do they? They have wheelchair everything. Oh. Eight, lane, have, eight we, lane highway. Yes. Pretty neat. Pretty soon wheelchairs will be legal on the street. Just I wonder like, if it goes up that side ramp like those bikes do. <laughs> what are you talking? You have to have it weighted down on one end. What are you talking about? Like a sidecar on a wheelchair. A <laughs> <laughs> sidecar wheelchair chair races I should have side chain he might know I still can't believe it. I'm still I don't even know what to say that was the best call we ever I got can't wait to relive Joanne you are popular see what you do you I was it. looking up Colabimo. I missed a lot of I can't wait to re-listen to that that was phenomenal <laughs> I know I, I, I don't know but you know hey well hey <laughs> <laughs> I mean I don't know what to say that was amazing it, maybe I mean, a clip for my husband so he can hear it. <laughs> <laughs> I I I'm sitting here. A little competition. Never heard anyone. Yeah, competitions. No, there's got to be a winner. I mean, the the trophy. <laughs> Fuck. There's got to be a winner and a loser. <laughs> That's right. There's got to be a winner and a loser. <laughs> if you're not losing, you're winning. If you ain't winning, you're losing. Jeez, I can't even imagine how dating is nowadays with Jesus. after a call like that. Can you imagine? Uh, well, wait a minute, dating. You want? Oh, let's, let's 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 talk about it. Let's okay, talk. let's talk about it. Okay. <laughs> Do you know that dating right now is all online? Okay. Of course. It is. So if you don't have, it's all on these apps. <laughs> and kids can't. The younger generation, you know, won't even go to a bar and meet somebody. I mean, I have friends who, and it's terrible. Yes. They won't be guys will go to the bar and then they won't approach anybody else. They'll have their little group. Yeah. So unless you have already made yourself some kind of, you know, person on the app, I mean, it's scary. I think it's scary. They're texting each other from the, right across from each other. Yeah. Well, just like the girl that. leaves and then they're like, I think uh -uh. I just saw you at the bar I was at. <laughs> Yeah, you did for the last two hours, and you didn't freaking say anything to me, you weirdo. Now I'm supposed to answer this and think that you're this is normal. This is really serious. You wait, you. let's see what happens with your kids. I mean, yeah. it yeah, is you get a response. Yes, my love. Yeah, when yes, they text dear. me from upstairs saying, "Hey, can you?" No, you come down here. Do you? Kill? I'm not answering this text. Are you oh, kidding me? That's sad, man. That's the scare. This, yeah, I hear these stories all the time. What happened People to the I work? Oh, phone. I was at the bar and a guy I left and the guy texted me saying, didn't I just see you? Yeah, you just saw me, you idiot. I know it's you. You're asking me this. You just saw me for two hours and you didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. Now you're asking me if you've seen me? And you want to hook up later? Yeah. It's like you're a weirdo. Well, it's like John Taffer's got to be rolling around pissed off right now because he's real big into what they call the butt funnel. When he, you know, you're John big Taffer, into the butt funnel, aren't listen, you? Listen, buddy. That's what I heard. Yeah, butt listen. funnel. Yeah, he's a butt funnel guy. The butt funnel. You know what the butt funnel is? No. It's something created by John Taffer, who re, you know redoes bars, bar rescue. That show. I don't think I'm supporting and that guy anymore. He, <laughs> let me finish. You're the one obsessed with the word, but he creates uh, uh, places in the bar where people have to naturally graze each other, like male and females or whatever. Butt funnel. Okay. And it and it creates a instant. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to bump into you. And boom, there's a conversation. Can started. we call someone else like a narrow so, way, narrow entry? Yeah, yeah. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> narrow entry. <laughs> is, is that you said it, not me? I mean, I I'm a not tight spot. And I'm is not, this in Buffalo or is this like all over the world? No, he creates bars everywhere. He's a popular. You never show. heard of John Taffer? He's a motivational nope. speaker. Gotta, is he? Oh, I gotta Google him. Oh. Bar Rescue. His show's probably done now. Mom, Mama Joe. Bar Rescue? No. Yeah. Something. Yeah, he's Bar Mama? Rescue. 
Yeah. It's kind of like Gordon Ramsay, but he does bars. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You want to talk about he it sometime? Does bar. Yeah, let's talk about it. I don't know oh. what to say that you don't know about that show. John Taffer. Yes. Being yeah. from he New York. bar, but he uh, bars. He bars, exactly what we just said. Bar rescue. He does. <laughs> he does. And then they fuck it up as soon as he leaves. They do usually. Well, that's yeah. like you said, that's like Gordon Gordon Ramsay, who came to an Indian restaurant. His last episode this season was <laughs> at an go. Indian restaurant in our town. Yeah. And that's exactly, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And then and as soon as that's exactly what? As soon as he leaves, they walk downstairs, they take a shit on the floor and put the flies and back. They go the back floor. to the way that yes, exactly. Yeah. You got it. They go back to exactly you how they were operating. <laughs> Ego. We call you for help. You come help, and then we say fuck you. That's yeah, ego. Exactly. You're not going to listen to this guy. I don't know who you're going to. Yeah. Not going right. to listen anyway. Well, it's like that show Hoarders, man. Those people are fucking nuts. Mental illness. I, I'm hey. I'm all about mental illness, dude. But uh, yeah, dude, let's talk about the beanbag. Tiptoe okay. around this topic. I'm going to tiptoe, and I'm going <laughs> to use the beanbag as an example. I bought this oversized beanbag. I have it now. As advertised, it looked like it might be something comfortable for you know my back and my back surgery recovery i got this thing and i opened it up and the first day it was you know five foot in radius big oversized beanbag by day two it expanded another foot maybe foot and a half by i think two weeks the thing was the size of a queen size mattress in the middle of my little living room i couldn't breathe i felt like the thing was gonna burst the blob <laughs> so wow. i had I asked T.O., do you want this oversized beanbag? I haven't used it. And this, I, 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 would your kid want it? And his kid always wanted one. So it was raining this day. You should have seen, we had to shove it out the door. It was harder to get out the door than a <laughs> fucking mattress. We're out there trying to get it in the back of his SUV, and he's running into it like the office linebacker <laughs> trying to drill that sucker in there. It filled up the whole back compartment of his car. <laughs> Oh and barely my. close. And and now you take over, Tio, because now it's in a uh, way bigger environment. What's it doing? Well, now oh, it's expanding. <laughs> no, it's expanding more. <laughs> well, let's say it's it it fits three of us and a dog, three cats on this sucker. <laughs> oh you. no, you have three cats. I do. Oh, so do I. Oh, no yeah. dog. I have an I have a what is it? A temporary dog, like my grand dog. She's coming. Grand this dog. Got a rescue dog. You got a grand doggy. But I got a grand doggy. See, see. I'm not sure yeah. how if anyone else has this has this uh beanbag huge thing. beanbag creepers, issue. Creepers. I'm gonna call it an issue because <laughs> I'm thinking ahead, like, how am I ever gonna get rid of it? <laughs> where do I drop off and where do I put it? How the fuck do you get it out of your house? If per chance one day you see a giant beanbag on the side of the road, it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> or if you see a large what appears to be brand new beanbag on the side of the road it's there for a reason they they're unbelievable well the <laughs> unbelievable part is that they ship that in a teeny box i know and that then is you, unbelievable. <laughs> you on yeah you, fucking jack in the box as soon as you cut that thing it's <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't stop from there hopefully you're not near it when you cut it <laughs> It was, it was, uh, you get trapped under that thing. Forget about it. <laughs> it weighs a ton, too. Oh, it's heavy. It's real and it's brand new. And as time goes by, it's going to be soiled with all your dust. dust. <laughs> it's just going to be 30 pounds of dust in there. <laughs> Every time you flip it, just. <laughs> God. You're so what color yeah. is it? Who knows? <laughs> it's got to be a what? Uh, Gray. It started. And what, what kind of with I've actually, never seen. I'll take a picture of it. And I'll put it on the wall. Actually, it on it's, the, yep. it's not that easy to, not that hard, I should say, to wash the outer cover and get it back on. I thought it was going to be impossible, but it's not that hard. Hmm. So that's a plus. But I'm thinking, like maybe <laughs> you're going to have to take it outside and you know, like beat it with the broom handle or something. You're going to bigger than a broom <laughs> that you have to do with rugs. Yeah, put it on. Beat it. Put it outside and jump off your roof like you're doing. You guys are nuts. Wrestling. Well, I hey. thought about doing that because we have a balcony. It would be a perfect backdrop. I know. My wife won't let us. Why not? Uh, she Jules, says if I'm, you're out there listening, let the guy hurt himself. I like mean, a kid. don't you want him to hurt himself? I mean, I dropped the elbow from up there. Oh, yeah. And you got rotator cuff sh shoulder surgery like <laughs> Tommy D and the 
Carpathian gorilla attack. Uh, yeah, we still haven't found them, Tom. Apparently, Something all the Carpathian gorillas look alike. <laughs> it's hard to decipher which one actually attacked you, but we're working on it, and we're getting to the bottom of it. They did have one in custody, but it was not the right one. Nope. He bonded out and went to Mexico. No idea what you two are talking about. That's okay. Tom knows. Yeah, it's okay. Tom knows. That's all that matters, Joanne. All right. Mama Joe. But I'm still... Side chain, if you're out there, please call back. Um, this could have been a defining moment in raw live history to have that great of a phone call. And he didn't even let me get a word in. And that's what bothers me, I think. Well, that's the best part. I think that's the worst part. That's feeling. what the man is missing these days. Yeah. Side chain. What a guy. I got it. Where's that name from? Side? That's not his real name. Oh, obviously. <laughs> right now. His mother must have hated him. Oh. Holy shit. If my mother named me side chain, I'd be I'd be in prison being a serial killer. Don't mind me, I'm not the brightest still. Yeah, you're not the sharpest tool in the no. the draw. Just call me a twenty five watt. Now it's the sharpest tool in the shed. No, you it, know. It could be either way. Sharpest yeah, knife sharpest in the drawer. Sharpest knife in the drawer. Well, sharpest knife in the drawer. Right. Not cool in the drawer. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Not the best toy in the happy meal. All right. <laughs> You know, <laughs> the best toy in the anyways. Yeah, the burgers never go bad. That's the good thing about it. Burgers the best part. That's the worst part about it's it. It's like astronaut food. The last Your pickle forever. has 19 ingredients. <laughs> How else can you go where salt has six ingredients? Your pickle has six nineteen, was it? How many how many ingredients now you now you make pickles? Yeah, I do. Thing. You know what it's made out of? You Cucumber. Make- it's made out of some vinegar <laughs> and some water and then some dill. So that's what six, yeah, yeah, six ingredients, not six. Nice. They probably sound deli- they sound delicious. Oh, My son pretty. used to make cucumbers. Uh, you know, so pickles and jalapeno. In there. How do you make cucumbers? Tell me about. No, 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 pickle. Oh. I meant pickles. Oh, pickles. I meant pickles. Pickle in the middle. Yeah, he pickles when he lived at home. You're it. You're it. You're a pickle in the middle. Pickle in the middle. Yep. I don't want a pickle. I just want to ride my motorcycle. Yeah. <laughs> the pickles are actually very good. Um I'm geez, sure they're delicious. A couple jars over and they are they are very good. I w- I will say that the, the kid can make some fucking pickles. I he is the pickle on, master. Uh, plan on pickle. selling a couple jars this yeah, year. Better, better be careful. Well, no, you know. Got to be careful. I'll be careful up front. Mm-hmm. Be careful now. Take it easy. Not to be afraid of. Got to be afraid. No, not to be afraid of. Do we need m M&M up in here? I'm not afraid. Do we need them? <laughs> Why did you do that? You don't like Eminem? No. No, what about this pink and what's her name? Oh, our Facebook poll. Right. Yeah. I I Let's get no, we're gonna I actually am a poll. Oh, that's a different poll. We're gonna hash this out right now, once and for all. Who is hotter? Well, pink, that's an easy question. Pink or Todd's chippy? Ariana Grande's hotter. Ariana Grande. Yep. We're asking for beauty alone. Ariana Grande. You want uh oh overall, just overall beautiful, sexy. Please comment in anybody. Want, because yeah. I'm sick of this Let argument. this guy know that Pink is such a great person, <laughs> but very manly. She's not manly. She's and, not manly. Uh, I'm just gonna say it. <laughs> I don't mean any harm. She's just got some manly <laughs> mannerisms. He's, so, he's so dry. <laughs> you are I don't get it. No, great attitude. Thanks. I, I, I'm sure she appreciates your compliments. Well, I'm sure that I'm not the only person who said it. Well, obviously, and not. I, it's just not my type of. Uh, That's okay, princess. But I'll you sp- know I'll spin it back your way, cocky boy. What the girl that you're, Ariana? Yeah. Right. Is she beautiful? Yes, yeah, she's very beautiful. But to me, she's too petite, and okay. I would probably lose her in the crack of the back of my headboard in bed. I don't know. I, I, She'd be gone. Go. I'd be like, "Where'd you go?" I'd be like trying to. Fish a freaking paper clip. Sure, you're looking out for under a mattress. Out the door. <laughs> you only had it open a crack. Yeah. Yeah. She goes through the door like freaking Kool Aid. All right. Now. All right. <laughs> hey, uh, I'm here. Hey, take it easy. That wasn't very polite. <laughs> take that back. <laughs> that was rude. Let me guess the color pink lemonade, right? Kool Aid. Yeah, that was cool Kool Aid flavor. Mm. Pink Kool Aid, was it? Kool Aid. It was, it was pink lemonade flavor. I can almost bet 
I bet. Side chain had Kool Aid before. You think? Yes. What kind? Oh, cherry. <laughs> that was the best. He loved you, Joe. And I'm a Joe. He man. McDonald's, he you, sweetie. He <laughs> said you fine, sweetie. The McDonald's orange drink. Yeah, mm. that one's horrible. The high C. I don't think it's there anymore. It is. I think I don't go to McDonald's. I bet you guys are too young for Tang. Oh, I love oh, Tang. Pooty Tang. <laughs> oh yeah, powder Tang. <laughs> oh, Tang. That Tang. Yeah, that Tang. tang. Powder we tank. Used to drink we hot tank when we was when we was sick. That's what they eat. Gross. They drink up in the mountains of Alaska to keep warm is some warm tang. And Sanka. I like Sanka. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I drank it when I was Sanka. I can't even make You're a joke about it. Pound cake. Pound cake. Pound cake is amazing. See, pound cake and some Sanka. Yeah, I like angel food mm. with a bunch mm, of strawberries and strawberry sugar water. Mm. You know. Yeah. And then a whole can of whipped cream. Fuck the little yeah. spread. Yeah, what yeah, crazy guy or cool? Yeah. Oh, they're home. Aha. Uh -huh. Ha, who's home? Philip and Claude. Oh, the twin oh, movie star. No, no, no. The twins are Alex and Philip, but Philip and Claude. Philip is the son, one twin, and Claude oh, is the husband. But they went downstairs. They're not coming up here. Oh, oh. Oh, you're yeah. going to come up? Come and say hello. Yeah, come and say hello. We're doing. Should have been here fifteen minutes. Hello. Come, come, come. Yeah. Where were you when she needed? Live, come, We're live. Put it, look come. at all three of us. Here he is. Bend down. He can't see you. There he hey. is. Hey, hey. How's it going? We're starstruck. <laughs> we're starstruck. They start right. They, he starts struck. Here, yeah, wait. Yeah. Starstruck. <laughs> okay. I was gonna make myself something to eat. Okay. Well, I have food on the on the on. We'll be done soon. I have food yeah, on the stove. Okay. What are you cooking? What, are you going to air mail oh, okay. What I made the other night okay. was I made Mediterranean okay. shrimp. Yo. And it, 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 Claude didn't like it, but he doesn't like anything. Shrimp um, is and it, and that water. I makes mean, no Claude sense. knows that today's National Ravioli Day. Uh, does he know it's National <laughs> Ravioli Day? I don't know if he does. <laughs> I, he does. <laughs> I hope so. I do hope. <laughs> I do. I do. And I there's do. also grilled chicken if you want to make a salad. I like grilled chicken. I don't like to grill it or cook it. I just like I like the pre cooked shit. So yeah. easy. I whatever. At least I'm eating. You like yourself well, that's a true. What funnel salad. I mean, what's wrong with a <laughs> Lebanon <laughs> my favorite sandwich, <laughs> Lebanon bologna. If anybody out there has ever heard of a Lebanon bologna, it's amazing. It's a sweet seltzer sauce. Where's salami. that from? France? Uh, Pennsylvania, I think. But um I make a sandwich that has Miracle Whip, Lay's potato chips, and Lebanon bologna <laughs> crunched together. Best sandwich ever. If anybody doubts it, try it. Joey, you should try that on your, with your bologna cone. Yeah, bologna I see, cone. I see him. Yeah. This, he used to, What's uh, a bologna cone? I mean, I probably would have liked that when I was bologna well. Bologna cone. That seems like a sexual you position. Just put some, well, I hope, uh, <laughs> hey, you want to do the bologna cone tonight, baby? You have to be overweight. Sad, Jane. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Lord. Well, no, he's going to come up with next. Slices Jesus. of bologna inside of. Ice cream cone. Well, that's not a bad idea. Oh, that sounds disgusting. Pretty not a good idea. I would do it. Well, you did it. Doesn't I not never it. fed my kids bologna until they asked for it. So, <laughs> no pun that. intended. They, you know, the myth is that bologna it's, is lips and assholes, and it's not. It's listen, really not. It's not food. Yes, it is. I just think of like they sell it at the supermarkets when they food. used to just throw the slices onto the women and see if you can get the bologna to stick. <laughs> they do I, ever play that game? No. No. Oh my God. It must What's be a Buffalo it? thing. No, that's a that's a TO thing. He's parked in his parking spot for a reason. Mama Joe, we have to remind you. Jeez, you gotta oh have more fun God. in the bedroom. Who? Start introducing food. Yeah, food. <laughs> cheese. I mean stinky cheese. I'm like 150 pounds. You think I buy that food to eat it? <laughs> 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 he'll buy a whole sub, take two bites, and throw the rest out. God. Or he'll nibble on a French fry. I want. There's got to be other people out there. You get ever eat, eat something and you don't eat, you know, the last bit of it. Yeah, I. Oh no. I have to leave the last bite to throw in the garbage. Just can't do it. I can't take that last <laughs> bite. Wouldn't be, wouldn't be right. Yeah, something's wrong with you. <laughs> I'm sure it happens. It does. I've had to say no sometimes. See. Sometimes yeah. you gotta just. Let it go at, at the very end sometimes, you know. Enough's enough. Sometimes you got to pull out, baby. Wow. Staying. Where's your mind? Okay, listen. 
Hi, Jen. <laughs> we, well, it's we, National Proposal Day also. <laughs> We're proposing new ideas here on Raw Live. Sidechain, thanks for calling in. It was wonderful. Um, we've, I think we've come to the end of the show. What a great time it was. What a great phone call. We thank everybody out there for watching it live. Was. And, uh, um, who shot JR? Who's JR? <laughs> From Dallas. Oh, my God. Who was it? Who? I don't know. I, I didn't don't watch. remember. Oh. Too long ago. Anyone. years ago. Anyone out there? Who shot JR. Who shot oh. JR in Dallas? Let no. us know. Yeah, if anybody knows, I'm definitely all. go to our raw, find us on rawlive.com. Join all our uh, social media platforms. Our raw chat group is awesome. We're having fun on there. You can participate in the poll of who's hotter, Pink or Ariana. We all know who I like. And um, you can also please go to our YouTube channel, like, subscribe, and share. And with that, we'll be back next week, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thanks for being here, everybody, and have a great night.